Hi, and welcome back to Sarah's Music. There's not a concert hall or an opera house or even a musician in sight today. We're at the Biomedical Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Research Laboratory at the Max Planck Institute for Biophysical Chemistry in Göttingen in Germany. I can memorize whole music pieces, but that was a little bit too much for me. Today's program is about music and science. It's a huge topic, actually far too huge for our 12-minute program, but we're going to do our best. And we're also going to call it NMR from now on. We musicians are often compared with sports people. We also train specific muscles by playing our instruments every day. It's said that a musician needs to practice about 10,000 hours before becoming a professional, and that's a lot of time spent in training. So we, like the sports people, also need to know how our muscles work. At the Institute, I meet Irvin Schoenderwald, a scientist who uses a special technique to study the way musicians move when they play. Motion capture is used for like the FIFA soccer games and, um, and in the film Lord of the Rings for Gollum, but you have been using it to study violinists as we've seen on this video. What, what has it shown you? What has it taught you about violinists? That's right. Well, it's, it's a great technique, of course. Um, so you can uh, study very uh, detailed movements with this. Um, and of course, for violin playing, it's, it's about very subtle movements, uh, how to control the instrument. So They need um, incredible control. It must be a difficult thing to measure. Um, well, the motion capture technique uh, allows for that kind of precision because it can me measure sub-millimeter uh, and it can measure very fast as well. So you can, I'm usually capturing 250 frames per second. What do you learn about a violinist? Um, yeah, so um, you can really study the technique in detail. So um, you really see how people interact with the instrument. That is for me the main part what I'm looking for. Um, so to, to relate the acoustics of the instrument to the actual movements of the, of the persons because they have to be connected. Um, and what do you do with this information once you have it? Now you can uh, recognize uh, principles of how people play. So, so basic playing techniques uh, become very obvious and um, you get them very nicely quantitative in your computer. So you can actually get much more information than, than just from the video screen. Does it help in a, in a pedagogical way? Does it, help, does it help teach people to teach the violin if they see what great violinists do with their bowing arm? Yeah, that's one of the main goals for me actually to do this research is to, to give um, teachers information which, which uh, is otherwise, uh, which is new for them huh? so at this level of detail. So. Have you tested any other instruments? Yes, I also worked with this technique with, with other people where I, uh, we, for, for drummers, for example, we did some experiments with a snare drum where we, um, yeah, where I also helped the people to, to develop this, the measurements for that. So it's, it's a very general technique which you can apply to, to any kind of um, instrument playing. Horn play is a little bit difficult yes, though. Course, yeah. <laughs> Therefore you have other techniques as you know already. <laughs> yeah, I'm about to go and find out. <laughs> Thanks Owen, that's fantastic. Let me see a little bit more of your video. Today I volunteered to be a musical guinea pig. I'm going to go into the MRI tube so that the scientists can see exactly what's going on when I play the horn. I'm not really looking forward to it all that much, but it's all a good cause, and I'm sure that the pictures which will come out of it will be fascinating. Dr. Jens Fram, vielen Dank, dass wir heute kommen könnten. Ich hatte ein bisschen Probleme mit der Aussprache von den Namen vom Institut. Es war sehr kompliziert. Gibt es vielleicht eine kurze Variante? Ja, das gibt es. Wir sind hier im MRT-Labor. MRT ist Magnetresonanztomographie. Und das Ganze findet statt im Max-Planck-Institut für biophysikalische Chemie in Göttingen. Also wir befassen uns mit der Biologie, mit der Physik, mit der Chemie, um Lebensprozesse aufzuerklären aufzuklären und dabei hat dieses bildgebende Verfahren MRT eine wichtige Rolle. Was ist dann eigentlich ein MRT für die Leute, die noch nicht in dieser Röhre waren? Im Gegensatz zu den Röntgenverfahren benutzt es keine Röntgenstrahlen, keine Radioaktivität und deswegen sehen wir auch nicht die Knochen, sondern wir sehen im Körper die weichen Gewebe. Das also ist, jetzt. Das ist besonders gut für einen Hornist. Wir haben ja einige weiche Gewebe hier oben. Wir sehen unsere Wangen, wir sehen die Lippen, wir sehen vor allem die Zunge. Wie seid ihr überhaupt auf die Idee gekommen, Musiker zu untersuchen? Also was wir hier machen im Augenblick ist weltweit einzigartig, weil wir 
eine, ein Verfahren entwickelt haben, das ausreichend schnell ist, um diese Zungenbewegungen zu untersuchen. Wenn man genau hinschaut, ist die Zunge sogar der schnellste Muskel in unserem Körper. Wirklich? Wir haben Geschwindigkeiten von 25, 30, 35 cm pro Sekunde für die Zungenspitze schon beobachtet. Is this to make me even more frightened? Peter Iltis is the reason I'm here. He's professor of kinesiology mm -hmm. at Gordon College in Massachusetts and also a horn player, which means he can now explain in horn players' terms what exactly is a professor of kinesiology. Yes, not many people know. And uh, basically kinesiology is the study of human movement. We're interested in how movement is produced and what it does. And in music, we perform by executing human movements. In fact, I would say it's very hard to find anything that you cannot say is involving human movement. So how do the movements that we produce allow us to make the music that we make? That's the kind of question I'm interested in. That's why you asked me to come here. You're mm -hmm. going to put me into a tube oh, yes. and make me play a horn. Yes. Uh, this horn, mm -hmm. which looks very different to my normal horn, um, because uh, no metal is allowed in the MRI. That's correct. That's correct. Actually, no metal that's, that's magnetic. And so this is a very specially designed bell, which has a very high proportion of copper and zinc. And it's non-ferromagnetic, so it doesn't get attracted by the big magnet in the Otherwise, horn. if it had been metal, it would have flown big into trouble. the... Okay, big trouble. So if we took your horn, it has metal attachments as well. Yeah. They, they would also give us problems. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, and then this, this goes... Uh, this is outside, and this goes inside, right. and I'm going to play it on my back. How did you get this idea yeah. of testing horn players? Well, testing horn players in general has always been something I've been interested in. I, I have developed a disorder called... Uh, embouchure dystonia, where the muscles that control the embouchure have been affected. And my goal was to learn as much as I could about that uh, in studying the disorder dystonia. But in order to do that, we have to decide what is optimal. And so the idea of testing elite horn players was born so that we could have something to compare to a benchmark example that we could compare to. Can you use this information for other things? Sure. And I think that, that that's very important um, in teaching, in pedagogy. We have a lot of things as teachers that we tell students that we do or that they should do, and actually, without really knowing what those things are, we may not be saying exactly what happens. And so if we can learn things from these films that will help us in our teaching to better uh, illuminate the kinds of things that we do, what we want them to do, that's helpful to them. And it may actually uh, provide them with more efficient ways of doing things as well. Good morning, Sarah. I'll take the horn for a moment and let Yanni. Okay, and now I'm going to show you the cat pause, which you have to play through. Just try it. That was lovely. And how am I supposed to play through that? I'm going to be in the MRI for about an hour, playing exercises which have been especially created for these tests. Bye bye. Are you ready? You say yes, and we'll start. So in a moment, it will all synchronize and you'll see the big breath going in at the same time simultaneously. On okay. The yeah, yours is definitely... The tongue is exercise. huge. It is. It takes up a lot of space. Diaphragm will rise, a liver will rise in this case. So Why is my tongue so far back? What's you're it retracting it. That's so just I'm how playing. you're getting your sound. <laughs> Pulsations with each note change, and as you go higher and higher, this area becomes smaller and smaller. So you're actually forming a channel with your tongue, the sides of your tongue, on the palate, and can, then the roof of your mouth. That's my tongue. the eyes. And the on the low notes, there's a big orifice there, and as you get higher, it's just... It's yeah, the eyes, yeah, eye muscles, actually. You Those, the, the eye muscles, are not yeah, okay. part of the nose, and below we have the tongue, <laughs> the upper... See the volume gets 
Would you never have had any idea that happened in Sunny Rock? Good. When you get to the top notes, this opening is getting much smaller. You're actually channeling the air through a smaller airway. It's going much faster, and that's helping you to play the notes higher. <laughs> On the lower notes, it's a very wide open area. It's scary. Yes. That's all from Sarah's music for today. What a fascinating day it was, and I wonder what science is going to think up for us musicians next. See you next time. Bye-bye. So who's up for the horn challenge today? Well, I suppose it's me.